place seems very important to you. Um, your original home, La Dolce Vita, that you can get in Assisi and its place. You talked about that. And, and many of your things are sometimes in, in the Keys in Florida, other places. And Brattleboro. Yep. Why did you settle in Brattleboro? And does it still work for you? Brattleboro works for me very well. I settled in Brattleboro. I was, you know, I was a Goddard College. And as many of us Goddard College students do, we travel a lot. I had like 19 different addresses up before I was like 24 years old. And I really need home. It's very important to me. It's a place to call home and settle into and have a community. And I drove to Brattleboro one day, and I just said, again, something about it works. I couldn't articulate it. Like, I couldn't articulate really Assisi, but it, it worked. And I've established a home there and raising my family there, and, and I love Brattleboro. Brattleboro's mm. a great town. I wish we had the water like you have here, right. the big lake. <laughs> and, and Well, one thing, you had the Warhol show, which I think would be perfect for discussions of archetypal patterning. Exactly. Um, a lot seems to be happening there. But in terms of place, you know, you're growing up in Brooklyn in a very tight Italian neighborhood. I was really influenced by culture and language. And the major thing I got growing up that way, which I think has been the biggest influence in my life, is the reality of another world. I mean, you go to your parents, your grandparents' home, you hear only, not even Italian, but you hear Sicilian spoken, or sometimes Neapolitan. And the foods, and literally the smell in the building. They would, my family's been in the same building for over 100 years. The building has the smell of another culture. And when you go there, you know you're transported somewhere else. Well, like you're not in mainstream America anymore. No. And I think that was the original thing that helped me understand, you know what? The world, the daily world we live in is but one part of a much larger domain. Mm. And one of the teachers that when I went to New York Institute said, when did you guys all know there was a self? Yes, all of us in training. And everyone's kind of scratching their head and wondering. I said, well, I'll tell you. It's being at my grandparents' home. Because I knew at that moment there was something so much bigger, so much richer, with its own language, with its own traditions, its own cultures, its own food. You know, and it's an immersion. That's why I raised my son bilingually. Huh. You know, I speak Italian. I'm slipping right now with it with him. But from the very beginning, I spoke almost the first six years, almost all Italian to him. We make wine. We have made sausages mm. together. To let him know, as in, in many ways as one can, put your feet in this other world to realize it's a lot more to life than what you see. Mm. And I think, if anything, that's a big picture of this work, to realize just open your eyes. Because what we tend to see is just a, a, a small piece. And the more we get caught in these patterns, it's, you're just seeing a tiny piece of the world. Look at the bigger piece. It's there all the time. Patterns give you, the piece, give you a picture. And it's even there in the initial interview, which we're kind of doing now, which is your, your specialty. What, yeah. what can you just briefly learn when you first meet somebody? The whole pattern is exposed in the first session. You, you, think of your first time you met your husband, OK? In the first or second time you meet that person, they express their story to you in the way they engage with you, what they bring you, what they don't bring you, how they treat you, how you treat them, the chemistry that goes on between you. Because what happens is you get this, this pattern of the one person, pattern of another, and they're bringing the pattern. It's like a hologram. At any given moment, this one little piece is telling you the whole story. And that's so why, yeah, for over 15... Look at those carefully. <laughs> I would love to work with couples that are thinking about getting married. We're all out of time. Michael Conforti, teacher, author of Field, Form, and Fate, analyst, uh, head of the Assisi Conferences, www.assisiconferences.com. Thank you so thank much for you being here today. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on Profile. <laughs>